Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. I hope you're all doing well. We've got two more Sam Martins to review in this video and both of these I think are absolutely lovely to look at. Um, very, very aesthetically pleasing. Can we find some faults on them? Well, you have to stay tuned to find that out. I especially like the one on the left. It's got a mother of pearl dial. It's a kind of dark brown color. It plays with the light really, really well. I don't think I've ever seen a mother of pearl uh, dial that color before. The one on the right, well, it's a sort of a classic uh, retro diver uh, design. That's what they're calling it. I think we all know where the design has cues have come from on that one. It is, however, a GMT watch. It's got a very, very nice bezel too. So if that sounds like the video for you, then keep watching. We're going to split these two watches up, review them individually, and then at the end, put them on the time grapher, see just how good or bad those movements are, and then we'll sum up the video. I'm going to start with the GMT model. Uh, so the reference of this one is SN0005-GMT-4. Just rolls off the tongue, these serial numbers. Um, so dash four may indicate that there's four versions of this. I can find two. Uh, the first one being a, a faux patina dial uh, that was printed and it didn't have the uh, date window. Whereas obviously this one has got a date window. The faux patina has gone finally and it's got applied indices. So it seems to be a bit of an upgrade. Of course, this is homaging a very, very prestigious and well-known brand. We won't go into that too much. So San Martin are always going to get zero for design, but we can mark them later on for their execution and uh, case finish, etc. This model's got some great proportions. The case diameter is 40 millimeters. Now 38 is my personal sweet spot, but I think 40 will suit most people's. And at least it's not one of those giant monstrosities. The bezel uh, does overhang by a millimeter, but really you just don't see that. Uh, the lug to lug is 49 millimeters, but due to the way the bracelet end links are, it's more like 50 or just over. But when it's on the wrist, you really don't see it. And you'll see that in the wrist shot uh, shortly. The case thickness is 13.3, which is quite thick. There's a reason for that. It's got a sapphire crystal bubble dome bezel insert, and then it's got a, a domed sapphire crystal on top to get over that dome uh, bezel. So that obviously is raising the height quite considerably. But it is honestly a really cool feature. We're going to have a look at that uh, in just a moment at a better camera angle as we start looking more closely at that dial. And what a dial it is. It's a lovely, dark, rich black, and that is because it's enameled. Uh, I don't know if I've seen an enamel dial on a San Martin before, so it is good to see that. This is also available in a kind of an off-white color. I don't really think that's the best choice. I think the black one is better, but if you like that one, of course, that's up to you. Nice, clean looking applied indices. Now, nothing new here. I've seen these on many models on many different watches. Clearly there's a factory in China knocking these out by the million. However, they do look good. Uh, they are loomed really well too. This watch, as you can see, has got the Mercedes hands. We've got the all important red GMT hand as well. Uh, the logo for San Martin is just printed at 12 rather than applied. And then of course we've got automatic GMT 200 meters of water resistance, which is aided by a screw down crown and a screw down case back. The minute track is printed onto the dial along with the frame around the date window. So that's it on the dial really. Let's talk about the main feature, which of course is that bezel. Now I think this bezel is the standout feature of this watch. Uh, I've never seen this bubble effect uh, bezel. Uh, now you've got to remember that I'm still fairly new to modern watches and homage watches. I've come from a vintage world where I've been repairing vintage watches for years. So you guys are probably going to scream at me and tell me that this has been done a thousand times before. And I quite accept that. However, this I think is very, very nice. I love that bubble effect. It's made out of sapphire crystal. Apparently it's got AR coating and it's even really well loomed as well. So it's got all the features you want. Um, but it's really nice as well. It's 24 click and it would be 24 click because it's a GMT and you can only set the bezel 
to set your next time zone so you've got every half an hour as well as every hour um, so it's nice you can see it here from different angles as well to try and accentuate that bubble you can also see how high the crystal sitting above that to compensate for it as well great feature the action on the bezels nice it doesn't make a click so it's not worth filming uh, the grip is very good as well i can't feel any sharp edges on the bezel which is normally what i can feel on san martin so they've uh, starting to deburr them by the looks of things over to the loom shot and what loom this watch has got i've actually found it incredible it's bgw9 uh, it lasts for absolutely ages now it will fade on the camera here but this is about a 15 minute time uh, lapse video it fades and then stays there and it stays there for hours now i got up to go to the toilet at about four o'clock in the morning and this thing was still glowing then and i've not seen that on any watch i own so i was very very pleasantly surprised if there's one thing that san martin do well it's case finishing and look at it here you've got that very nice and well executed polished chamfer on the sides the brushing is just right it's not too coarse it's not too fine uh, the center links are polished as well the bezels polished all done to an extremely high standard now i don't think that san martin do this in-house i think this is all subbed out to a machine shop somewhere and they clearly know what they're doing so it's great to see now i did have a comment recently uh, in a forum about uh, sharp edges san martin having sharp edges now honestly i've handled quite a few of these watches and i can't find them uh, i'm not saying that they're all perfect definitely not maybe i get a better model when they send it to me i don't know uh, but this case hasn't got a sharp edge on it to be seen the bracelet edges haven't the only bits that may be sharp is where the polished links meet the uh, brush links that is reasonably sharp there if you put your thumb across it it's not going to cut you it's not going to hurt you and i think it's done that because it's a close tolerance certainly on a bracelet such as this because you don't want the links coming too loose so it needs to be made to a higher tolerance uh, so there we go that is a lovely looking bracelet all the same um you know it is essentially uh, a homage to a jubilee bracelet should we say We've got the typical San Martin clasp at the end. Uh, it's a milled clasp. The case uh, up top, I'm not too sure whether that's milled or not, it has their lovely embossed logo on it. And you've got four holes for micro adjust. The sad part on this watch, as on nearly all the San Martins, is when you turn it over, the case back is completely plain and boring. And they fit it in such a way that realistically you're supposed to have a special tool to open these. Now I can get them open and we're going to see the movement in just a moment. Uh, I will say one critique though, and that is the crown on this one. So most San Martins seem to have a screw down crown and this one is no exception. Um, but it, this one seems to be either prone to cross threading. It's just something not quite right. Um, it takes a few attempts to actually screw it back onto its position. Now, Further investigation is required. I will probably take that off and give it a good clean. I think there's probably a little bit of swarf or a burr on the thread and then I can satisfy that. But for you guys who aren't able to do that, then that is definitely a bit of a negative. Here's the movement then. It's a Hangzhou 6460 GMT movement. I believe this is cloning another ETA of some form or another. Visually, it looks very, very nice. Uh, I love the regulator as well, especially because you can fine tune it with that little screw. Um, but I can't say any more. I don't know about its reliability or anything like that because I don't know how long these have been around. Plus it's a manufacturer that I'm not familiar with at all. Maybe a future video from the other channel to take one of these apart, who knows. Here it is on my seven inch wrist. I think it looks really nice the size is just about right not too big not too small yes that is a little bit of snow in the background which was playing havoc with the contrast but you get the look i think it's very nice so the all important bit how does this movement perform on the time graph well i've set the lift angle to 50 degrees this is in theory a high beat movement at 28,800 vibrations per hour i like to think that a 36,000 is a real high beat not a 28 but there you go that's another story um now here we go so we're getting a trace 
at uh, dial up at minus 14 seconds a day. I'm sure that's intolerance. Sam Martin seemed to say that they have tweaked the performance of this movement. So to be honest, I would expect to see better than that. We're going to stress it now. Crown down. Crown down. Well, it's still pretty decent. That trace is going to change slightly or the rate is going to change for the better. But it's still a minus. I would like a movement to run plus, not minus. So I'd still like to be early rather than late. Uh, crown up, another interesting position. B terrace slightly creeping out. Now, of course, we should run the movement on this for longer in each position to get a fair reading, but at a glance, it tells you all you need to know. It is still consistent, but it's consistently slow. Should I be so critical? Is 12 minus 12 seconds a day a lot or a little? Well, it is a little, but I think realistically, this could be improved by a little bit more of a tweak on that regulator. Let's put dial down. This is always the least stressful and you should therefore get a better result. But what are we actually getting? We're getting a similar reading to what we've got all the way through. So yes, the movement's reasonable. Longevity, I don't know. Uh, it could have been tweaked to go a bit faster rather than slower. That's my critique. So we're gonna end this part of the video with how much this one is gonna cost and is it worth it? So this watch on their store as of today, the 22nd of December, 2022, is 323 pounds and 67 pence, which is roughly around 390 US dollars. That to me is a big chunk of money for a Sam Martin watch, to be honest. Uh, this is not in the sale that I could see at the moment. So perhaps if you are interested in this model, that you should wait for the next AliExpress sale to come along because you can guarantee that this is going to probably have 25% or 20% reduction on it. Um, is it value for money for that? I just, I don't know. I think it's a little bit too far. Um, but that said, it is still a very well-made watch. It's a very nice looking watch too. Now, the other one that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the one without the date, is slightly cheaper. It's claiming that this one is in the sale and the recommended retail price was 445 UK pounds. But, uh, you know, we know how uh, prices are marked nowadays. You can see this one is a little bit cheaper at 289. Um, yes, nice watch, maybe on the high side of price, definitely worth waiting for a sale to arrive. So that's the review of this particular one. Let's flip over to the next watch. This one's the pick of the bunch for me. This is the San Martin SN059-G-V2. Uh, it's a mother of pearl dial, so all naturally occurring. And of course, with mother of pearl, no two dials are gonna be the same. They have this available in a black dial, a blue dial, and a white dial. The blue one is really nice. I'm assuming that I have the black one here. Um, it does look very brown and it will do throughout this video depending on the light you're in. A lot of the film is taken outdoors and in natural light it does give that brown uh, tone. Uh, in the evenings or indoors it is a lot darker and again because it's naturally occurring uh, product therefore you can only assume that this is really a black dial. They don't list a brown dial at all so that's my theory at least anyway. But just look at the watch. To me, this is absolutely beautiful. Now, I do have an affinity with this design. Uh, the Rolex Datejust uh, is an aspiring watch to me. It has been ever since I was a child. My best friend at the time, we were 18 years old. His father bought him a two-tone uh, original Rolex Datejust. And I was insanely jealous uh, all I could afford, all my parents got me at the time, was a citizen. And um, I've carried that all the way through my life. I'm now 50 years old. So it was a long time ago. When I got into watches, I actually picked up a rotary, a two-tone date just homage, uh, which is from the early 90s, I think, uh, just to try and scratch that itch. And then just a few years ago, a friend of mine, another friend of mine, actually brought his date just round to my house. We needed to do some work on it and I was able to compare the two. And of course, 
got to put some shots up for you now so the opportunity to see this watch in person uh, this is it's just fantastic for me it's everything i want it to be it's a good quality homage uh, that's not going to break the bank and it's just beautiful to look at here we are close in on the dial and we get to see all the details so we've got batten indices that are all loom double battens at the 12 a simple minute track running around the outside every five minutes with arabic numerals we've got the giant cyclops i'm never sure if i like cyclops but of course it is traditional on this type of watch so clear as day to read the date the applied san martin logo with automatic and 100 meters or 330 feet as the water resistance at six o'clock now i have to question why this one is only 100 meters of water resistance and the other one was 200 meters because they're pretty much the same watch this one has got a screw down crown it's got a screw down case back which is pretty much identical to the other model uh, so what is making it different perhaps it's got a slightly different crystal gasket or is it just because this is classed more of a dress watch and not a sports watch so they're not rating it as highly uh, suggestions from you guys leave it down in the comments i'll be interested to know what you think about that other than that mother of pearl dial the standout feature has to be of course the fluted bezel that's what gives it its unique look um, that is really really nicely made it's highly polished but one thing to say about it as i found out certainly through filming this video it's one heck of a dust magnet the dust gets in all of those little uh, crevices if you like and it's impossible to clean it out certainly if you're trying to get in a very close and personal to film it for you guys but i still love it i love the way it looks it's full of bling full of sparkle it is definitely a show-off type of watch and it doesn't disappoint at night either here is the loom shot it's bgw9 loom so it's glowing with that sort of blue hue this is a time lapse over 15 minutes you'll see that it fades a little bit but then it kind of just stays there and it'll burn like that for a few hours more it's not as good as the other one in the way that one's really really bright i think that's just because the baton indices are a lot thinner so there's a lot less loom but it does the job well enough this is definitely one sparkly watch the case is completely highly polished on both sides the sides are all sculpted the lugs are highly polished of course that fluted bezel is uh, the center links are on the bracelets but fortunately for a bit of contrast we've got those brushed outer links which do fortunately break it all up otherwise i think it would be just too flamboyant and too over the top you can also see here as the bracelet's been stretched out that there's plenty of gaps between all of those links that just aids the comfort it also keeps air in there to keep the sweat away gives it that little jingly jangle effect that people like to talk about on these type of bracelets but it's still good enough well made and it's all solid stainless steel same clasp as what's on the other model and is what's on most san martins that i've seen uh, to date very well made one I'm not going to comment any more than that because i've said it time and time again and over to the case back well they've made an effort on this one you've got that high polished area around the case back and it's been ground or brushed if you like on the bottom 10 out of 10 for effort i'd still like to see some water rating or a model number or something put on there come on san martin you can do it really nice size dimensions on this one the case is spot on 40 millimeters it is 11.9 millimeters thick now that is excluding that cyclops i'm not going to measure that as well the lug to lug is only 48 millimeters so it's going to look great on the wrist however the lug width itself is 21 millimeters you're not going to get a great lot of choice if you want to put this on the strap at 21 millimeters because it's not one of the most common uh, width dimensions out there if it had been 20 well you could put anything you like on this one so that is one slight negative for me though i think the bracelet works i don't think you'd want to put this on a strap necessarily anyway so before i take the watch inside and put it on the time grapher here it is on my seven inch wrist okay the snow is still playing havoc with the contrast but you get the picture and you can see that the dial looks a lot darker uh, in this particular light setting 
Back in the warmth of the house then with case back off, here is the movement. Doesn't it look almost identical to the Hangzhou uh, 24 joule GMT movement? This is the PT5000, says 25 joules on the rotor. And do wonder whether these are coming out of the same factory, certainly the same blueprints anyway. Looks very nice. I do like a gold movement. And of course, this is a high beat, so you're going to get a smoother tick. And it should be set up nicely on the time grapher. So let's have a look at that now. Lift angle set at 50 degrees again. Let's get this one going. See if it's going to be better than the other movement. And instantly I can tell you that it's going to be. That one's set up to pretty much perfection. Look at that. We're getting minus two seconds a day. Okay, it is dialed up. Nice, easy, stress-free position. But no beat error and very good amplitude. So what we need to do, of course, is stress test it by moving it into a different position. And see what readings we're going to get now. And straight away, I can still see that's pretty damn constant. Okay, <clears throat> the beat error is slightly out, but you're always going to see that. Uh, but it's pleasing just to see the trace going, you know, horizontal on the screen. No deviation in the rate at all. Let's put it up to crown up. Uh, hopefully we'll see the same. It is dropping ever so slightly, but, you know, it is gravitation pulling on that balance wheel that causes all of the aggro in these more stressful positions but what i'm seeing is this is decent leave that running long enough that rate is definitely going to drop uh, way above minus 10 seconds it's going to improve a lot better you can already see it dropping now so overall i'm pleased with that lastly dial down usually the best position and should get another flat line pretty much uh, give it enough time so I'd say that this one they have improved hopefully they've tweaked it but I'm yet to see a PT5000 on a time grapher that isn't running really really well well I promised you a closer shot of the dial and I couldn't resist taking the movement out of the case to have a closer look at it now okay my lighting on my bench is accentuating that brown it doesn't really look that well but you can see here that the mother of pearl gives it all that different tonal contrast depending on what angle you're looking at it i absolutely love it and uh, i think though the blue one is definitely the model of choice on this one time for the all important price so this particular model is 279 pounds 65 that is around about 335 us dollars or about 316 euros if you're in europe and watching this um, that is, of course, out of the sale. I would expect any sale anytime soon, probably one in January. You would certainly see a discount on this watch. Is it worth that money? Just about. Obviously, I like this watch, so I would pay that for it. I think it's a very handsome looking watch indeed. However, there is a different version of it. You can see it here. This is a different model. This is the SN058. It's a 36 and a half millimeter case. Still has the PT5000, but you can see here, you've got every color under the rainbow. Most of these colors I don't like. I like the blue one. I like the green and I like the black. I'm not a fan of the blue or this orange either but maybe you guys are has a slightly different bracelet but you're getting the same look a smaller case for a little less money and is only a little less money 263 pounds i think is only going to shave off maybe 20 dollars or something like that off the price so there you go that is the conclusion of this watch final conclusions then well, it's been great to put these next to each other they're both completely different but in a similar sort of price point uh, I've been finding it quite difficult to find faults I honestly really do want to find faults in watches I don't want to keep doing reviews and going this is great this is great this is great um, I am a watch enthusiast I do have over 200 watches a lot of you know my eclectic tastes it's very hard for me to find any watch to be honest with you that I don't like but I think both of these are offering something very good on the market for 
a budget watch collector out there if you can afford to buy one of these you would not be disappointed in either so there you go then you tell me your favorite leave your comments below i will read every single one of them i'll try to reply to as many as i can there's going to be links to these in the description should you wish to check out these or any other models from sam martin i'm sure there's going to be sale coming along very very soon so stay tuned for that and if you're watching this live have a very merry christmas for those of you who actually celebrate christmas and i'll see you in the new year bye for now